Good morning everyone, welcome back to our channel and in today's video we've got something a little bit different. We've left the mountains, we're back on the coast. And because you've missed it so much, so we're going to start the vlog with something a little bit special. Roll that intro. Yes, so a slightly different vlog today, guys. A bit of a to-do vlog. We've got things to do and we're taking you with us. Now, if you watched the last vlog, you'll know that um, we mentioned we've got that dreaded MOT, the Itiuve, coming up tomorrow. Ooh. We're feeling very nervous about that. Um, but yes, today we're actually, um, we're actually leaving Spain. So, uh, passports? Check. Peritos or passport para? No, no, no. No, no, no. Vale. Gracias. So we've left Spain. We've managed to cross the border without any issues whatsoever, and we're on in. Gibraltar. On the Rock of Gibraltar. On the Rock of Gibraltar. And the first thing you notice when you cross is no one's wearing masks. You don't <laughs> have to wear masks. No. It's quite early in the morning, so it's not too busy at the moment. We've come in early to beat the crowds. And uh, yeah, it should be an interesting day. Well, we've just pulled over. Charlie is very... <laughs> Sorry, all these GoPros everywhere, it's confusing. We've just pulled over and Charlie is very, very excited to be back in Gibraltar. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Yeah. You want to go back in the boat, don't you? Hey, Charlie. Oh. <laughs> oh, he might need a poo. Oh. Did you see that? Oh. Now... I don't know if you've been following along, you'll know that our door has been broken for ages and we haven't been able to get out of the van, the side door from here. But yeah, we fixed it. You know how we fixed it? With a piece of blue tack. Classic Explorer style. Good old Vinster, bosh him up, but it works. So that's all we need. So guys, that's the boards pumped up um, and I won again. Thank you very much by a couple of minutes again. Man beats machine, but to be fair, the, the other board, board was bigger. A little bit a foot bigger, 10% <laughs> bigger, but I'm claiming the victory. But I'm, I'm glad to have it actually, because if I had to pump up both boards, I'd be dead. It's pretty, it's quite hard work, isn't it? It is hard work pumping yeah. up the set boards. Yeah. And I'm glad I've got a machine, so I don't have to do it. I should do those, shouldn't I, to get some arm exercise every now and again, give you a break. But you get out on the water quick, it's about yeah, six or seven minutes and the boards are pumped up and you're ready to go. Yeah. Um, but if you haven't seen our Gibraltar vlog, we did like a full kind of travel informative vlog from in Gibraltar. We'll link it here somewhere over a year ago, so we won't be going like all round and showing you all the sites today. You can just watch this one. Um, yeah, so... Uh, so today, we've got some stuff to do, but first we're getting out there. Made it out onto the water. 
And we've seen dolphins. Yeah, but they're too far out. We thought, oh, should we go out to them? But they look, I don't know, how, it's hard to see how far in sea distance. But it's it looks hard like... to judge it. But yeah, so we know it's like the seagulls flying, which is like the yeah. telltale sign. And you can see dolphins. quite a few, but they're too far out. You can't even pick it up on camera. But... There's a strong current going that way, but we're going to try and go over towards the rocks. But I mean, what a setting. It's absolutely mm. beautiful here. It's um, Catalan, Catalan Bay, it's called. <laughs> The Coletta Hotel on Catalan Bay, yeah. Catalan Bay. And you've it's completely the... different from like the other side of Gibraltar because you've got this sheer rock face and it's just... Yeah. It doesn't really feel big. like you're in a big city built up area, does it? Yeah. But anyway, we need to paddle before we hit the rocks. We need to go to that rocks. Them rocks? Them. Those rocks. Those rocks. first and all but um, we're getting a little bit embarrassed now because now there's a few more sup borders and none of them have got life jackets on <laughs> but we are safe we don't care what we look like our dogs are keeping them on it's more of an easy ride on the way back so nice and tranquilo yeah. because going that way you've got the waves splashing against the front of the board so the dogs aren't so happy with the ride this way it's just nice and chill a few people have asked us before which do we prefer the sup boards or the kayak and clearly the sup boards but partly because you you can just use them in so many different ways if it's really choppy you can just sit on them or if you're worried about your dogs falling in um and if you want to you know test your skills you can stand up or yeah can i just or... say that if we didn't have the dogs we would be standing up yeah. like true professionals lab well, actually i have bruised my back I slipped and bruised my coccyx, so um, yeah, you have, yeah. So yeah. So he's got to take it easy. But we do normally stand up, but you know, when you've got the dogs, you're a little bit more apprehensive because obviously they've got their live jackets, but I don't think they'd appreciate it's being dumped. It's probably showing up on camera that it's quite choppy as well. Yeah. And the other set for us, they're kneeling down, so you know. So are you enjoying yourself though? Yeah. Oh, man, oh, man, on the I quite river. like all the movement, it's like relaxing, isn't it? Charlie, no. Lay down. Sarah's already dismounted and he's on her way back to the van. Me and Charlie have got to make the transition now. Are you ready, Charlie? And can I just say, these life jackets for the dogs are not just to protect them, they're also a really good workout. Now, Nick would generally demonstrate doing this, but as he's got a bad back, I'm going to demonstrate. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah! You're right, we'll take them off now. I think it's just worth getting the life jackets for the dogs, even if they never see water. Because they just look so and cute. And it's so easy to manage them. It's so easy to manage them. Dizzy was just barking at someone. Controlled, controlled up. barking, of course. And I just picked him up to stop him from barking. The main reason we came into Gibraltar today was not. I know what you're thinking. It wasn't for the cheap alcohol. It wasn't for the crumpets or the marmite or the cheap diesel. But that doesn't. That you know, it's good. That that is all good. That's we all will good. be getting some of those things. <laughs> but no, the reason why we came in today is because Nick and I actually got married in Gibraltar all those happy years ago. 
Um, yeah, and it was, it was an interesting day because obviously we live in Spain, we had to cross the border with all our wedding guests, all of us gold up. Um, luckily, Sarah's sister organised a nice little car for us so we didn't have to get on the old bus to get to the registry office. <laughs> but then we got married, had a few few glasses of champagne on the marina and then went back to Spain across the border. So yeah, yeah a bit so of a different experience. It was a different experience. And um, the reason why we did it was because Gibraltar is obviously British and it was so much easier for us to get married here rather than in Spain. So we just came here and did it. So the reason we came today is to renew our wedding vows. Aww. No, only joking. Dressed like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not really. Um, we came because we needed to get um, an updated wedding certificate. Uh, uh, yeah, we need to update it and translate it into Spanish. It's for some paperwork we need to boring, do. Boring, horrible. Some boring paperwork we need to do in Spain stuff. to do with tax and stuff. Um, yeah, so we've just drove past the office and it's closed. Yeah, <laughs> typical, isn't it? Typical. <laughs> like Mediterranean office hours. <laughs> like shutting at, you know, midday. That's what yeah. they do here. So the weather's anyway, nice outside. They just, oh, just forget it, let's go down the beach. Summer hours maybe started already. But anyway, not to worry. I have just jumped on my phone, had a little look, and I think we can do most of it online. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was nice bringing the set boards in. And like Nick says, now we can go and get some cheap alcohol <laughs> and some diesel. <laughs> So no trip to Gibraltar is, isn't complete without a little trip to the English supermarket. Now you're probably thinking, what's so excited about an English supermarket? Well, when you haven't been to one for so long, since last time we are in Gibraltar. It's been like over a year. Over a year, I think, when we were in Gibraltar last. It's quite exciting. Well, Sarah you... hasn't made any crumpets for ages. We can get crumpets, <laughs> we can get marmite. Mind you, since Brexit, there's a lot of things you can't get. You do have to be careful. Apparently, you can't get any fruit and vegetables. And you can't take meat, not, it doesn't apply, or meat, dairy. Meat and dairy the products at all now across the board. It's like the same when, you know, you UK people leave to go to France. Same sort of there's thing. There's a limit, a weight limit on certain other things, so you have to be a bit careful. We're not sure about yeah. the vegan stuff. Let's see how we go. And here's Rob. Here's Rob. <laughs> Rob's just a friend who we know, and he's seen us. Say hello to the vlog. Hello. This is Nick. That was quite crazy. I haven't seen Rob for like 10 years. Basically, when I was at uni, I worked in a casino and used to work with him and live with him. And then I came to visit him out here like a year later and his girlfriend was Sarah's best friend. So that's that's how I met Sarah. So crazy, I haven't, yeah, I haven't seen him for like 10 years. Now he lives in Gibraltar and just happened to bump into him, random. Anyway, Sarah's making a head start on the shopping in Morrison's and I thought I'd take this opportunity to thank today's sponsor of the video and that is Skillshare. Now, if you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an incredible online learning community full of thousands of different classes covering a massive range of creative subjects. Now we've had Skillshare for quite a few months now. We've been doing a number of different classes to do with photography, the design programs and all that sort of thing. Um, I use Premiere Pro to edit, I use Photoshop and various other programs, but I haven't had a chance to use After Effects, which is gonna be really useful. It sort of works in conjunction with Premiere Pro and you can do motion graphics, different titles and all that, this sort of thing. So I found a really interesting class by Ivan Abrams. It's a Skillshare original called Introduction to Adobe After Effects, Getting Started with Motion Graphics. So I'm really excited about using this to use this as well as Premiere Pro to create some nice graphics on the future videos. So if you're interested in signing up for Skillshare, go and check them out. First thousand people to click on the link in the description will get a free premium membership trial version of Skillshare. And then after that, it's less than $10 per month for an annual subscription. Anyway, I best go and catch up with Sarah before she buys too much Marmite or Crumpet or can you ever have too much? What are you looking at darling? Well obviously, you know, because we live in Spain, you don't get any of this vegan stuff. You don't get vegan bacon or like ready, like anything really, nothing like this. It's a novelty, isn't it? 
It's a novelty, but I mean, I kind of prefer cooking stuff from scratch. So we're not going to get that much. We've got some sausages to try. So did we get everything we came for, darling? <laughs> we did, yes. Vodka. Vodka. Now, even though Nick and I don't really drink much at all anymore, we've got some vodka because it's that's a, a litre of vodka. It's not because we're going to have a mad one, it's because it's... it's uh, four pound for a whole litre of vodka. So we thought we'd have a little a little vodka at some point. We did get um, Marmite, yeah. Now, half of the shelves are empty in there though. Like, it's crazy. When we were speaking to our friend Rob before, he says now, apparently, the... Uh, the food from to get to Morrison's comes all the way to the UK, all the way from the UK on a, a lorry, and then it goes to Algeciras, which is about, I don't know, what, 15 kilometers? 15, 20 kilometers, yeah. in, in Spain, and then it goes from there, it has to go on a boat to be taken by sea into Gibraltar. That's what Rob said. And all the shelves are crazy. empty, like all the sort of fresh foods empty and things like that. Because of Brexit, obviously it's gonna take a while for them to get all the, I don't know what they have to do, or it may never go back. It will just be an empty supermarket. Well, I'm happy we've got our muffins, we've got our marmite, we've got our crumpets, uh, we've got some cordial. Oh, we've got our peanut butter, a nice big thing of peanut butter. So we've got the little things that we like to get from like an Englishy supermarket, even though it was half empty in there. So let's see if we can make it back across the border without any issues. That car there. Little Jaguar happens to be the car that we got married in or got a lift in. Well, I'm pretty sure it looked exactly the same and had these nice red seats in the back. So, a bit crazy as we came into sort of our wedding stuff type thing. There he is. So, what was the verdict? Bargain. Bargain. Unfortunately, though, 96.9 we... pence. A litre of diesel, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cheap, it's pretty cheap. Um, but unfortunately we couldn't fill up the tank because we're going to the Ite Uve um, and we put this cleaning solution in to try and help with the emissions. And to do that, you need to not have too much fuel in the tank. So we just put 10 litres in, but hey ho. Every little helps. <laughs> You couldn't leave Gibraltar without getting stuck in a queue, it just wouldn't be the same. <laughs> Did we choose the right one? Did we choose the right lane? And that's us back across into Spain without any issues, apart from getting asked if we had any tobacco or alcohol, which obviously we told them we did have our bottle of vodka. Each. <laughs> but yeah, no, no stress really. The queue was probably only about 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah, and it's gutting because we could have smuggled loads of petit pois <laughs> or green beans or any vegetable. <laughs> yeah, because fruit. we didn't get searched, so we could have sneaked things in, but you know, we are law abiding citizens, aren't we, my darling? Yeah, I'll get that cucumber out of my pants now. <laughs> <laughs> but back to sunny Spain. Good morning folks and we are on our way to the vehicle inspection, that dreaded MOT, the Iti Uve, it's called here. Don't know what it's called in any other country. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, since getting back from Gibraltar, we've done the best we can, we've checked over the van, you know, checked all the lights and all that sort of business, we've given it a good clean, not that that makes a difference. Then we've done a couple of little botch jobs, like we had a observation last time which was the batteries were a little bit of movement with the battery so we put this piece of wood there and now it's actually solid it worked really well yeah a little piece of wood slotted in one side a little sort of shelf bracket the other yeah, to so go with our baking it's, tray it's done the job and then we've give the engine a good wipe over underneath because obviously we have a little bit of a little bit of oil on there nothing too much to worry about 
and um, I think that's it. Oh, we changed. Oh no, what are you talking about, darling? <laughs> we changed the <laughs> pipe, the air intake pipe, um, for another air intake pipe from our diesel heater. <laughs> we're, so not you, we're not using the heater at the moment, so we just whack that in there. And that does look pretty smart. To be, to be fair, when you lift up the bonnet and look at the engine, he's looking gleaming. He's looking good. We've cleaned under there. And then we've also just this morning put one of those uh, like fuel type cleaner things in with the diesel to sort of help with the emissions. So we've done best we can. It's running smoothly. We've also turned down the revs a little bit. Although they feel like they've been turned up. So maybe we turned <laughs> it the wrong way. But no. Let's just keep our fingers crossed and um, and yeah, I guess we'll just update you um, when we get closer. So we're at the station now and uh, because of Covid, only one of us is allowed to be in the van, still. So I'm waiting outside, nervous as hell, while Nick's having it all checked over. I don't think we've passed. I think the brakes were out. I think the back brake, when he was testing the, the brakes, they seem in balance. You have to get like the little counter in between the yellow segment and one was in it and one was way out so um i think that's one thing we failed on we'll have to see how we go okay guys well we failed it's good and bad news bad news is we failed the good news <laughs> is um well if it is good the good news, news is that it's the brakes it's what we thought we'd we fail expected on. the brakes and it's nothing else and he was like quite anal as in like he was even checking our little camping gas bottles mm, which i've never done and like we six. left the gas we left the gas on and like at the back so i was thinking oh no you know as in it wasn't switched off but there was no leaks, so that's good, isn't it? To be honest, I was a little bit worried when he asked to open the side door. I was thinking, should yeah. I have gone round outside the van rather than opening it from I the know, inside? I know, so it's a good job we fixed that. <laughs> yeah. That'd so there you go, there you go. Just the brakes, hopefully not too bad. But um, anyway, we're gonna head up back now to the mechanics, our mechanic straight away on the way back and see what he says, because obviously you get all the numbers on the on the paper. But this hopefully. was observed last year and like six months ago, so we kind of expected yeah. it. So, so we just need to get that even if we just have to change both brakes on the back mm. fully then you know that should be all sorted so it's actually not as bad we failed but it's not too bad he did so. say look at that beauty he really liked the air ducts he what? thought this is flash you know the air <laughs> air direction tube thing he was quite impressed with that i could see <laughs> all right anyway guys we're gonna end the vlog so catch up with us next week and um, hopefully we'll have all the van sorted by then and um, be planning some trips away yes. <gasps> I'm going to have to